once upon a time, when animals still had the ability to speak, a huge buffalo was living on the shepherd's farm. The buffalo was helping the shepherd in the field work, and the shepherd was doing his best to make him happy. One day, the shepherd, who was taking the buffalo to graze, sat under an apple tree to get some rest. At that moment, a hungry, cunning wolf sneaked up and followed them. Mmm, that buffalo would be a great lunch for me. <laughs> but I need to get rid of that human. The wolf suddenly appeared before the buffalo and the shepherd. I have a few questions for you. If you can't answer, the buffalo is mine. The shepherd and the buffalo were very curious about what the cunning wolf would ask. Why does a buffalo serve a human when he has such powerful horns, huh? Well, because I plow the shepherd's field, and he feeds me the best food. Hmm, well, how can a shepherd make this huge buffalo serve him? Is that a magic cane in your hand? No, it's not the cane that's magical, it's our wisdom. The wolf did not understand what the shepherd meant. Your wisdom? What's that? That's not an answer. Now I can take this buffalo home if I want. But I'm very curious about this thing called wisdom, too. It's not with me, but if you want, I can show you wisdom on one condition. What's that condition? Until I bring the wisdom, I will tie you to this tree so that the buffalo will be safe while I'm gone. The wolf was so curious about the thing called wisdom that he even agreed to be tied to a tree. While the shepherd was leaving to bring back wisdom, the buffalo was grinning at what would happen to the wolf. <laughs> Although the wolf could not understand why the buffalo was laughing, he continued to wait for the shepherd for hours. After a while, the shepherd came out with a big box in his hand. He opened the lid of the box, but the wolf saw that the box was empty. Well, wisdom, where is it? Did you bring it? It's inside, right there in the corner. If you don't see it, let me untie you so you can take a closer look. As soon as the wolf got into the box to see the wisdom, the shepherd closed the lid on him. Help! Help! Wisdom is too precious to fit in a box, dear wolf. Wisdom is in the mind, and you can only find it by searching for it like hidden treasure. I promise I will never underestimate the minds of others again. Now I will be more generous and smarter. Please, get me out of here. The wolf remained in the box for a whole day. The next morning, the shepherd and buffalo saw the wolf learned a good lesson and took him out of the box. Thank you, thank you, thank you. From that day on, the wolf got along better with other animals in the forest and respected everyone's mind, from flying birds to tiny insects. Deep in the forest, near a lovely lake, was a wolf, a hungry wolf, whose stomach was growling. He had his eye on three tasty young pigs and was waiting for an opportunity to catch them and make them his dinner. The oldest of the pigs was greedy and gluttonous. He was always eating his brother's food and never sharing his own food with them. Hey, that apple is mine. 
I'm saving it for later. Hmm. A greedy, gluttonous pig. I know very well how to catch you. <laughs> the bad wolf placed one of the gluttonous pig's favorite apples on the forest path, and he set a trap at the end of the road. <laughs> now eat these apples so that when I eat you, I will be full. <laughs> The giant gluttonous pig was overjoyed when, on his way home, he noticed that there were many kinds of apples on the ground. <laughs> oh, my favorite fruit! <laughs> ah. Ah, here's another apple! <laughs> um, what? There are lots of apples here. I must take them all before my brothers see, because all of them are mine. Mine! <laughs> when the giant gluttonous pig tried to pick the last apple, the wolf pulled the snare rope and a huge heavy net fell on the pig. Even though the giant pig struggled, he could not escape from the net. Help! Help! What's happening? Help! Ha ha ha! You fell into my trap. I'm going to take you home and eat you, gluttonous pig. At that time, the pig brothers, who were really hungry, heard the voice of their brother. Help! Let me go! Help me! When they rushed towards the forest road in great haste, they saw that the evil wolf had caught their big, greedy brother. Oh no, we must save him. But, but I am not strong. I'm afraid of the wolf too. Despite everything, the brave little pigs decided to save their brother. They followed him as the wolf took the giant pig to his lair. Tired from carrying the giant pig, the wolf fell asleep. Psst. Hey. What? Is there someone there? <sighs> Shh. Be quiet. We came to save you. The pig brothers tried to push the wolf to save their brother, but they couldn't because they were not strong enough. Maybe if you'll give us the apples you hid in your bag, we can gather strength to save you. No, they're mine. If I get out of here, I'll eat them all. Oh, the noise of those piggies. Their voices haunt my dreams. I will eat them all. One by one. Yum, yum, yum. Then we're leaving. You stay here with the wolf. The giant pig was finally convinced. Um, wait, uh, okay, okay, take them. But, uh, I'll keep just one for my pig. Ah, uh, okay, all right, all right, all right. Here, take them all. The brothers ate the food given by the giant gluttonous pig and were finally able to push the wolf aside. Together, the three pig brothers managed to rescue the giant pig from the net with great difficulty. Then, they quickly returned home. When the evil wolf woke up, he was very angry that the pig had escaped. Uh, no one can steal food from me. The giant gluttonous pig understood that stealing other people's food was actually greed. And from that day on, he was happy to share all his favorite food with his brothers, especially those beautiful, colorful apples. Once upon a time, in a village far, far away, lived an old couple. This couple had a chubby cat named Milo. But he was not the only animal living in this house. A very large family of mice lived within the walls, running around the house in search of food. 
they were careful to not get caught by Milo. Catch! I caught it! Watch out, Milo is behind you. Every time the mice came out of their homes to get food, Milo tried to hunt them down. Huh, is everybody here? Gonzo? I'm here, Mama. Well, is my daughter Princess here? Yes, Mama. So now we can eat. Come on, kids. While the mouse family was eating their food, Milo watched their nest carefully. Kids, quit goofing around. Eat your meal. But just when Mommy Mouse said this, the grumpy Milo cat stuck his paw into the mouse hole. The mouse family raced around in a panic to escape. His speedy claw grabbed Princess by her tail. Help! He's got my tail! Just as Milo was about to eat Princess, her brother Ponko bravely rescued her. Unable to get what he wanted, the wild Milo grumbled and went back to his bed. The next day, the crowded mouse family held a meeting. No matter what we do, Milo moves so quietly that we can't figure out when or where he'll try to catch us. Yes, yes, yes. right, right. Yes. So we must make a plan. While everyone was thinking long and hard, Gonzo had a brilliant idea. I've got it. We're going to put a jingle bell collar on Milo. So when he gets close to us, it will make a tinkling noise to alert us so we can hide. Brilliant! Bravo! A perfect Great. plan! I like that idea too, Gonzo. But what mouse is brave enough to put a jingle bell collar on a cat? I can't. I can never do it. It's okay. I can do it. Gonzo, it's so dangerous. I have a plan. The next night, Father Mouse secretly watched Milo the cat as Milo did his daily mischief. Eventually, the cat went to sleep, and Father Mouse gave the signal for the plan to begin. First, one of the mice closed the lid of the pot that was on the stove so that Milo would not wake up by the smell of the food. Then, the other two mice plugged the cat's ears with small sponges so that Milo wouldn't wake from the sound of the jingle bell collar. And finally, the father, mother, and mouse siblings carefully held Gonzo by a thread and lowered him slowly towards Milo's head. Gonzo carefully slipped the jingle bell collar around Milo's neck without Milo noticing. When the plan was completed, the mouse family immediately went back to their home. And from that day on, whenever the grumpy Milo tried to hunt mice on the corners of the house, the mouse family heard the jingling bells and easily escaped from Milo. That was a perfect idea! Morning. While the treacherous wolf was hunting in the forest, he saw a stork family flying in the sky. He knew they had built a nest in the hills, and they had eggs in that nest. And that gave him an idea. Ha ha ha! I found what to eat. Stork eggs. Ha 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 But I have to think about how to get to that hill. Hmm. And cuddled up warm in that nest was a baby duck, sleeping soundly. His stork brother rang the bell to wake him up. Hey, wake up, duck. Quack, quack, quack. The duck woke and jumped up. Huh? What's going on? We're going for a flight. Mama will check the eggs. Don't fall asleep and be eaten by the wolf. Wolf? Yes, because you can't fly high like we do. So, uh, see you later, little flightless duck. Bye-bye. <laughs> but little did they know, the treacherous wolf was already watching them and planning. When the stork siblings flew up into the sky, 
the baby duck tried to follow, flapping his little wings on the edge of the reeds. He hoped that one day he'd be able to fly. But his practicing was interrupted when he spotted something shining brightly among the reeds. Ooh, what's that? The bright thing he saw was a pair of red shoes. How beautiful they are. I wonder if they will fit on my feet. As soon as the baby duck put on the red shoes, he took off from the ground and flew high in an instant. <laughs> I'm flying! I'm flying! The baby duck immediately followed the stork family. Oh, look, the baby duck is here. Wow, how did you get so high? Thanks to my magic red shoes, look! <laughs> Down below, the wolf was watching them in amazement. Magic red shoes? Ah, now I have a great plan. At night, while the stork family and the baby duck were sleeping, the wolf sneaked up on them. The red shoes glowed brightly, even in the dark and he stretched out his claws and grabbed them by the strings. Tomorrow morning, first thing, I'm going to have a stork egg omelet. <laughs> the baby duck awoke as the morning sun rose, and he was alarmed when he couldn't see his red shoes next to him. Oh no, my shoes! My magic shoes are not here! How am I going to fly? The baby duck rushed to look for the mother and his siblings. Mother Stork! Brother! Where are you? However, he could not find them anywhere. <laughs> now I won't be able to fly high without my magic red shoes. <laughs> While the baby duck was crying with sadness, he noticed the treacherous wolf flying overhead. <laughs> I'm flying! <laughs> Here I come, stork eggs. It's breakfast time. Oh, my shoes! The wolf stole my red shoes! The baby duck tried very hard to follow the wolf, but it took all the strength his little wings had to take off. And then he would fall back down to the ground. Oh, I have to protect the eggs from the treacherous wolf. Oh, if only I could fly. The wolf landed in the nest with the magic shoes and stepped towards the stork eggs. The baby duck could see him trying to get the eggs one by one. The stork eggs are in danger. I must stop the wolf. The baby duck mustered up all his courage and flapped his wings as hard as he could. Uh, uh, eggs! I must save the eggs! Finally, the baby duck was in flight, high in the sky for the very first time. I'm flying! Yay! I can fly! The baby duck landed and sneaked up on the wolf. He grabbed the shoestrings of the magic shoes and quickly pulled them. What? The baby duck? Shoes? Just at that moment, the stork family quickly came to the baby duck and drove the wolf away from the nest with a fury. <coughs> the treacherous wolf fell into a swamp. Help! The stork family thanked the baby duck for saving the eggs. Now you can fly as high as we do. <laughs> yes! <laughs> then it's time to fly together as a family, kids. The baby duck was so very happy he could fly. And from that day on, he realized that he should never stop trying and that he didn't need magic shoes. He just needed courage and perseverance. So the baby duck became the only brave duck that could fly with the storks in the sky. One day, a smart rabbit was going to enter her house in the forest 
and she heard a terrible sound from inside her home. <clears throat> I am the invincible warrior who takes a thousand steps. I can trample a rhino under my feet and crush an elephant like an insect. Nobody can beat me. The rabbit was very scared by what she heard, so she ran away from her house right away. And after a while, she came across a fox. Hey, fox, someone has taken over my house in the forest. Could you persuade him to leave? Of course, rabbit sister. The rabbit and the fox went to the rabbit's house. The very confident fox shouted into the cave. Hey, you! How dare you break into my friend's house? I am the invincible warrior who takes a thousand steps. I can trample a rhino under my feet and crush an elephant like an insect. Nobody can beat me. The fox did not expect such a bold proclamation and was so afraid he didn't know what to do. Uh, so, um, sorry, rabbit sister. Uh, I, I, I could never win against someone who tramples an elephant. When the fox ran away, the rabbit got even more scared. She started wandering sadly among the trees and finally came across a rhino. Hey, Rhino! Someone I don't know broke into my house in the forest, and I can't get him out. Can you help me? Of course I will. Come, bring me to your home. The rabbit brought the rhino in front of her house. Hey, you! How dare you break into my friend's house? Come out and show yourself. I am the invincible warrior who takes a thousand steps. I can trample a rhino under my feet and crush an elephant like an insect. Nobody can beat me. But the rhino was scared too and didn't know what to do. Ha, huh. well, uh, Bunny, I just remembered I have a, um, a dentist appointment. Uh, very important. I had forgotten. I gotta go now. Bye-bye. When even the big rhino couldn't help the rabbit, the cute rabbit hit the road again, and this time, she came across an elephant. Hey, elephant! I am so desperate, only you can help me! Please get this stranger out of my house! Don't worry, cute little rabbit! I'll help you! Let's go! The rabbit brought the elephant in front of her house. Hey, you! How dare you break into my friend's house! Get out now! I am the invincible warrior who takes a thousand steps. I can trample a rhino under my feet and crush an elephant like an insect. Nobody can beat me! The elephant was so scared that even her trunk trembled. Dear rabbit, I'm sorry, but I don't want anyone to crush me. The elephant left the rabbit and went back to her house. At that time, a small frog was passing by the rabbit. Hey frog, no animal in that forest could help me. Please bring out the stranger who broke into my house. Uh, of course, rabbit sister. Show me your house. The rabbit showed the frog her house. Hey you! If you don't come out of my friend's house now, I'll come drag you out. Ahem, <clears throat> uh, don't come close. I am the invincible warrior who has to, uh, take, who takes a thousand steps. I can trample a rhino under my feet and crush an elephant like an insect. Nobody can beat me. Now listen to me carefully. I'm a frog with sticky feet, and I'll jump right on your head and annoy you for days. Uh, don't, don't you dare. Uh, please, uh, stay away. Well, then get out now. Hearing the brave cry of the frog and the rabbit's unwanted guest inside, the other animals immediately gathered to see who the mighty warrior was. Come on. How long are you going to make me wait? I'll count to three. One, two... Uh, 
Okay, okay, I'm out. I'm here. Everyone looked around, but saw no one. Where are you? No more tricks. <laughs> right here. I'm standing at your feet. <laughs> it's me, centipede. All the animals started laughing when they saw the centipede. <laughs> the people of the forest laughed a lot that such a powerful voice came from a tiny centipede. <laughs> but they always believed that some people in this forest can have very surprising powers. I am the Invincible Warrior! <laughs> Once upon a time, in a forest far away, there was a tiny frog named Tiddalik. Tiddalik loved to play in sunny weather. He met some of his friends by the lake, and he jumped on the lotus flowers with them. Eight, nine, and ten. <laughs> I win, I win. <laughs> I made it to ten. I win, I win. Bravo, Tiddalik, you did it again. Blip. This jumping game of the frog friends made them very tired, and therefore they were very thirsty. Let's drink some water, Grog. The three frog friends met on a big leaf and started to drink water. Tiddalik was drinking so fast that the other frogs warned him. Tiddalik, be slow, you'll bloat your belly. Bleep. But I am very thirsty. I'd want to drink even more. Um, I think we should stop him, Ralph. After a while, Tiddalik, whose stomach was swollen with water, suddenly stopped. Because there was not even a drop of water left in the lake to drink. Huh? There was a lot of water here just now. Where did it go? Because you drank it all, Tiddalik. Crow. What? Okay, but I feel like I haven't drunk water at all. How can you still want to drink more water? Bleep. Where else can I find water in this forest? Tell me quickly. There's a creek behind those giant trees. Hush, why do you say that? What if he dries up the creek now? Bleep! Tiddalik, with a swollen belly, hopped away from his friends. The frog friends, who were staring in surprise, immediately went to inform the giant hippo. At that time, the giant hippo was resting under a tree. And his assistant, Fox, was on watch right in front of him. Bleep. Hello, Fox. We urgently want to talk to the giant hippo. He is in a deep sleep right now. You better wake him up. It's very important. What can you say that is more important than his sleep, little frogs? Fox, hurry up. Bleep. Otherwise, we will not have a drop of water to drink or to wash. Bleep. When the fox saw the frog's fear and urgency, he woke the giant hippo up. The hippo opened his eyes wide and bent over the two frog friends. The frogs told what had happened. And then they jumped on the giant hippo's head and went in search of Tiddalik. If we run out of all our water, it will be a disaster for the jungle animals. At that moment, the bloated Tiddalik arrived at the creek. 
Here is the water. So good. A rabbit, who saw the frog Tiddalik drinking water by the creek, was going to come to the edge and drink water. But the frog warned him. Hey, rabbit, all the water here is mine. Go drink water from somewhere else. But there is no other water around here. Even the lake has dried up. The frog drank all the water from the creek without listening to what the rabbit said. Now, he has an even bigger belly than before. Where else can I find water here? The rabbit's eyes widened in surprise. You finished the water of the creek before I could take a sip, and you still want to drink water? Yeah! I drank the lake. I fished the creek. I'll drink all the water. Tiddalik continued to search for water in the forest, with his big belly growing larger by the gulp. Wherever he saw a small puddle, he started to drink and drink it. The inhabitants of the forest were very surprised. When they saw the dried lake and the creek that no longer flowed, neither an owl could find water, nor a gazelle. Finally, the giant hippo and little frog friends saw the sad rabbit standing by the creek. Have you seen a frog that is greedy for water here, rabbit? Yeah, he went that way. He even drinks tiny puddles formed by rain. The giant hippo sprinted with all his might and followed Tiddalik's trail. And other forest animals followed after him. The frog, Tiddalik, was just about to drink the last puddle he found when the hippo and dehydrated forest dwellers appeared before him. Tiddalik, stop! You drank all the water in the forest and left us no water to drink. You must give back the water of the lake and creek. Your frog friends are telling the truth, Tiddalik. A huge hippo like me and that tiny bird you see need water too. Even plants, trees, insects need water. Please open your mouth and give us back the water you filled in your stomach. Even though the inhabitants of the forest begged Tiddalik, whose belly was full of water, he was not willing to give back the water he drank. What are we going to do? Hmm, if we can make him laugh, he can't hold back any longer and he'll give back all the water. Yeah, great idea. Besides, Tiddalik loves to laugh. The rabbit found a hat and started entertaining the frog. Although Tiddalik found the rabbit funny, he managed to restrain himself not to laugh. This time, the panda was on the stage. He started dancing so funny that everyone in the forest started laughing at him. But Tiddalik didn't laugh at the panda's dance either. Then the little squirrel quickly started to draw a picture. The forest dwellers began to wait in anticipation. Everyone laughed when the squirrel showed him the picture he made. But Tiddalik didn't. In the end, the giant hippo was on the stage, not to make them laugh, but in anger. Now I am very angry, Tiddalik. The giant hippo started with his huge body jumping and grunting like a frog nervously. 
All the animals were laughing because whatever the hippo was doing looked funny. Finally, the frog Tiddalik could not stand it and started laughing like the others at the hippo. <laughs> Just as his mouth was opened, all the water he drank gushed out everywhere. <laughs> the lake has returned to its original state. The creek started to flow again. And even small puddles have finally filled their place. As Tiddalik laughed, his belly shrunk. He's back to his old cute frog form. Well done, Tiddalik. You didn't leave all us many forest dwellers thirsty. You don't have a big belly anymore. You can easily jump on lotus leaves. Oh, I had a huge belly. Now I feel so relieved. The next time you feel thirsty, think about others. Everyone else in this forest needs water as much as you. For example, I need to go and take a shower right now. <laughs> you are right, my friends. The forest dwellers were very happy to have water again because water is the most valuable part of the forest.